Hi everyone, welcome to Solar Integrations. If you've ever woken up in the morning and suddenly remembered you forgot to look at the weather forecast for today and um, it's overcast and your batteries are flat and you've got load shedding starting in half an hour and you've got to start charging things otherwise you're not going to make it through then you're going to find today's automation very useful. It's an automation which will look at the next day's weather forecast and then adjust your battery settings to either uh, let you use your full capacity of your batteries and uh, make full use of them or if you've if you've got um, some bad weather forecast then keep some uh, battery in reserve and make sure that you've got enough to get it through to get through load shedding. I hope you find it useful and um, we'll see you after the break. Hi everyone, welcome to Solar Integrations. In today's video I'm going to show you how to automatically adjust the battery settings on your inverter for uh, the weather forecast. So if you have a low um, solar uh, production level forecast then keep some extra um, power in the battery so you can get through forecasting. What you don't want to happen is that you run your batteries flat overnight and then um, in the morning there's no sun, it's very overcast, you've got low solar production and you have to go through a load shedding stage. Um, so uh, to make the best use of your batteries though, if, if the weather's going to be good, you want to run them as flat as you can um, and get the most use out of them. And um, if the sun's going to come up uh, at the, uh, the regular time and you're going to get good production, then you want to maximize that. So um, this is a graph over here of my forecast. Um, the forecast is in yellow. The actual production was in green. You can see it's pretty accurate. Um, what you're seeing over here is that the forecast is actually higher than the production and that's because my batteries are fully charged so there's there's no place for it to put the extra power that it's got. Um, I've found Solcast to be um, uh, very good for forecasting. You can use the built-in one in Home Assistant. The reason I use the Solcast one is it allows for um, two strings of panels so you can have an east, uh, an east string and a west string which is what I've got and uh, it'll combine those into, um, into one uh, forecast for you. And whereas the one which comes built into Home Assistant only allows for one string. Um, both of them are free. Um, if you don't have Solcast installed, I do have a, a previous video and I'll include a link. Okay, for this uh, integration to uh, automation to work, you're going to need to have, the, um, as I said, the, either the Solcast integration working or the built-in uh, solar forecast from Home Assistant. Um, you can use either one of them. Um, the Solcast one does give you a longer range forecast as well, which I find to be quite handy. And um, it gives you a few extra times. The, the built-in one will also work. And um, then you're going to also need to have the ESP32 integration working. Um, I'll include a link through to that as well and um, that will give you um, the ability to write the settings back to the inverter. Um, the um, SolarMan and the SunSync integrations um, don't work with uh, or can't write the settings back to the inverter. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just create the scenes for my settings. So the scene is the, um, the set of settings that I want to be able to load. So I'm going to create one for uh, low solar production and one for high solar production. Um, we, go that, we, we do that by going into settings, um, automations and scenes, and then go into scenes. We're going to add a scene. Um, let's call it um, low solar forecast okay and um, we go down to our entities down here 
and we go through to uh, time zone we want for uh, time zone one uh, time zone two time zone three time zone four five and six okay so that's my six time zone settings so that's going to be my battery discharge level um, that it's going to keep in reserve and um, if I want to add my um, priority load I can do that over here and if I want to toggle my a uh, grid charge I can do that over here as well okay so my grid charge will be if I go um, time zone and I go down here to uh, grid charge so it'll be toggle grid charge time zone one um, if I select that it will um, it'll be whether I am going to charge from the grid or not um, let's just get to three four five and six okay I can also um, select my priority load over here as well if I want to be able to toggle between uh, my um, my settings for uh, to prioritize the battery charging or running the load um, so I've got all of those. I'm going to save that. Okay. Um, that should all be saved. Save. Um, and if I go back here now, I've got, um, there's my low solar forecast. What I can do, I'm not sure if I can just copy this. Oh, duplicate. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to call this one high solar forecast. High solar forecast. Okay, and click on save over there. And if I click on that, I can just adjust it like I want. So for high solar forecasts, I want it to run down to 20%. Um, okay, so that's updated. That one's updated. That one's updated. That one's updated. And that one's updated. Okay. And um, all of these, I don't want them to charge. I don't want it to keep the battery charged from, from there. Um, the way I work my, um, my battery is I discharge to 20% uh, maximum. And then I set my battery, my inverter to um, switch off at 10%. So I've got like a 10% um, emergency um, uh, battery capacity. So if I get to, uh, I won't discharge from 20% if I'm attached to the grid. The only time it's going to discharge more than 20% is if I have load shedding early in the morning and there's no sun and um, all the loads start and most of my loads only started about 10 o'clock by which time the battery is usually charged up a bit in any case so my high solar forecast scene is set now i want to set my scene for my low solar forecast um, what i want to do is keep this at 30 percent and not discharge more than 30%. So my time zone 12 o'clock to 5 is at 30%. 5 till 9, I'm going to keep at 30%. And um, then I'll let it discharge to 20% at that stage. You can obviously customize these whichever way you want to. Um, what I might do is just set it um 
at three o'clock if it hasn't um, if it hasn't charged enough by three o'clock then let's set a minimum of 40 percent so um, it will charge my battery up to 40 percent at three o'clock what I'm going to need to do is just check that my time zone is set for that as well so um, from five and I'll keep that at 40% as well. So if I'm going to have a low discharge, a low solar production day, it'll keep 40% after 5 o'clock as well, from 5 till 12. Um, I'm not going to bother charging at any of these times. Um, and I will charge from 4 o'clock until 9 o'clock. And 9 o'clock till 12 o'clock. And the rest I'll leave. And I'll save that. Okay, so now what I want to do is just um, add some buttons over here onto my dashboard so that I can switch manually between um, scenes if I want to for my uh, weather forecast. Um, so I'm just going to add it as an entity and um, let's call it um, solar forecast scenes. This is just so that I can add it manually, so I can switch between the scenes manually if I want to. Um, let's, that's the low forecast scene, and um, scene for, uh, um, that's the high solar forecast scene, okay. So the low forecast and high forecast, if I go save over there, I now have um, two buttons um, like that over there. If I want to activate one of those scenes, I can do this over here. Um, the other thing that I like to do on my ones is I've got... Um, let me just go show an editor. Let's just copy that. And let's go over here and let's just add it in on this uh, this menu over here um, okay so now what I can do let me just click done okay so now these are all my settings It's displaying. I can click on low solar forecast. Um, there it's going to show me. It's, in, in, uh, it's increased all of those and that it will now write back to the, um, to the inverter. And it's changed that to charge from the grid as well on those settings. And if I go activate over there, it'll switch it back. That one's at 80% for some reason. So I'm going to need to fix that. So if I go back to scenes, automations, scenes, my high solar forecast, that was the third one, I think. Or the, ah, that one over there. So I changed that back to 20%. I don't know how it was set at 80% for some reason. So you want to check your, um, your settings are being written correctly. Um, so now if I go low solar forecast, activated. And then that's switching properly between those. So now all that I want to do is do the automation to, uh, to do that automatically for me. Okay, so for my automation, I'm going to go settings, automations, and I'm going to create a new automation, uh, create new automation. And I'm go in, going to go into the YAML editor over here at the top. Okay, and I'm going to include this code for you guys. Um, so that it will um, just to make your lives a bit easier. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to look at the forecast for tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Um, it's going to check what the, so it's going to have a trigger at 11 o'clock. It'll check what the numeric state is of the sensor dot forecast uh, for tomorrow is. Um, if you want to just double check to make sure that you're using the correct um, the correct entity go to settings um, automations sorry 
settings, integrations, sole cast, and the entities. And you'll go down, have a look at what um, forecast for tomorrow is called, what that entity is called. If you click on it and you go up here, it'll tell you what the name is. Sensor.forecast tomorrow. Okay. If we go back to here, sensor.forecast tomorrow, that is correct. Okay. That is my scene. Um, you can do the same in your scenes over here. Um, if you go to developer tools and you go states and we type in here scene. Um, it'll show us um, the high forecast scene is scene dot high, high underscore solar underscore forecast and that over there. So you can check that you've got those two scene entity names correct. That'll be that one and that one. So if it's below 40, then turn on the low solar forecast scene. If it's if the if that um, value is above 40, then turn the high solar forecast scene on and that's our integration. Um, the only thing that we also want to do um, is just give it a name. Okay, that's fine. Forecast for tomorrow. Okay. So we now have a forecast for tomorrow automation. Okay. And I hope that is going to give you guys some good ideas. Um, it's going to still take a little bit of customization, but um, we can see from over here now if you want to see what it looks like in the um, in the automation that's what it's going to look like um, if you do it in the on the graphical side and you can obviously customize that you can have more than um, more than two um, two scenes as well if you want to um, let me know what you think of the video in comments and um, if you're not liked and subscribed and you find this type of content um, interesting please like and subscribe it doesn't cost you anything and um, it does help my channel grow. Um, I'm at about 650 subscribers like right now. I'd like to get that over a thousand. So um, if you can help me, that would be great.